Well, it's a big step for us. I think it's a big step that lots of sports teams should be taking. And we've made certain commitments today to be transparent around our sustainability policies and strategies. The fact that we have a significant impact on the environment through operating in a cricket team in, in Dubai every year. And we need to take measures to try and improve that, um, make better decisions around the, the choices we make in terms of how we assemble our players, be it through travel, the suppliers we use, and the commercial partners we, we have on board. So there's lots that we can do, and what we can't do, we're looking into offsetting programs to try and reduce our impact on the environment because it's such an important issue to well, the whole world. In, it affects everyone, but it does affect cricket as well. We've seen the impact of, of climate change on, on cricket, and it's going to affect test playing nations um, in the future. So we need to make, make the changes that we can do right now, make certain commitments by signing up to things like the, the UN Sport for Climate Change Framework, and make commitments that we're going to stick to and be held accountable to. That would be the easy thing to do, wouldn't it? That's, that's for sure. And I think we've seen, well, sports and politics, there's always a discussion about how they should or shouldn't over, overlap. The reality is sports teams do have the, the power to, to inspire and create change. And yes, we're a new team, but we want to do things differently and use our players and all the stakeholders involved with ILT20 and Desert Viper specifically to try and inspire that, that change. So there's no hiding place. We have to just go for it now. Um, yes, it's challenging. But you know, the reality is that cricket is under under threat. Matches are already affected by by the weather: the extreme rain, extreme heat, players suffering heat exhaustion. That that is the reality. It's already here, and it's only going to go get worse unless serious steps are taken. And, that, and that's what we're doing right now by launching the strategy. I'd like to think not. Uh, we are a cricket team first and foremost. You're right to, to point that out. And, Yes, we fell at the final hurdle, but I think we're well prepared to go one, one step further this year in, in the second tournament. But sustainability is a core part of, of what we're doing. It upholds the Desert Vipers values and mission statement that we also announced today. And everyone in board involved with the team know what we stand for. That, that's the great thing about it. We hear from Tom, our director of cricket. It affects our recruitment policy around, around players. We have to have people on board who share the right values about how we go about things and having that elite high performance culture and sustainability represents that I think in some ways about making good choices, about being good citizens in a league where we're, we're guests of the country effectively. So it's important to, to leave a good legacy and I think players have the, the power to inspire through their performances but also what they do off the field as well and we know we'll get the support of our, our group around that. So I think it will help us bring the team together if anything I don't think it will affect performance in a negative a negative sense and it's important that we do this authentically we're not forcing people to do things they don't want want to do we're educating we're learning as we go and let's hope that we're on the other side of the results should we get to the final in 2024 in summary detail uh, our carbon footprint for year one now, this is something, uh, and I'm looking at the room uh, to correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm not sure that I've ever seen another cricket team publicly display and share um, the carbon footprint of the entire business. Um, certainly, I think that's rare generally in, in, in sport, um, but it's been a fascinating project for me. Um, seriously i seriously eye opening but fundamentally this is this represents the the start of our carbon reduction journey we can't do anything meaningful that we can't measure right so what we're going to look at now is um, really informative to anything that we do next to reduce our footprint and one thing i want to be really clear about is that we don't have all of the answers to what we're going to do to share with you today. The important thing I think is drawing a line in the sand and saying 
this is what we look like and we've got to do better. And you know what, we're going to be really public about this in the hope that we can take all of our stakeholders with us. So that means obviously our, our fans and our suppliers, but I hope that this means other cricket teams as well, particularly teams in our league. What does our, our, our carbon footprint look like? So by our calculations, we the uh, our emissions amounted to 570 tons of carbon now what's really interesting about this and i'm told and there, there are people in the room who know much more about this than, than i do but I, I i'm told that the breakdown of our footprint is fairly typical for a sports team and gary and martin please Please do jump in if uh, if I stray too far off course here and what what I'm saying. Um, and the thing that jumps off the slide here is that nearly 75% of that 570 tons is attributable to travel. I think it's wonderful that uh, that the management have uh, taken this initiative because we see just on a very small scale the influence that climate change has had in our game as you mentioned you know, we've been playing some extreme heats and we can also see you know unusual sort of weather patterns sort of hit games and, and uh, wipe games out uh, but there's the bigger picture that uh, is the most important thing and that is the significant um, you know flood damage that we've seen globally we've seen bushfires uh, all around the world that uh, have been unpredictable and, and uh, unexpected uh, so there's been many many sort of global events I think has, has, um, has given us enough insight to know that, uh, that we need to make a change and it's great that there's a Vipers are, are, are sort of making that initial step in the, in the ILT20 and hopefully it'll have a ripple effect out into other tournaments. Look, I, I don't think we can avoid the flying, uh, you know, when it comes to T20 cricket or sport in general, uh, or business or, you know, life, you know, we need to get around. Um, as, as, a, uh, as a human race, we, you know, we have to travel for work or for, for, for personal reasons. Um, but I think the most important thing is us having an understanding of the consequences of that. And I think uh, hopefully, uh, you know, with the um, presentation today and our initiative, we are, I suppose, the beginning of uh, that education process in our little field, which is only a small portion of what happens globally. But if we can, one, educate ourselves on how we can make a difference, and we're not going to you know, be able to change the world overnight, but just make a difference and educate others along with ourselves in doing so, you know, hopefully we get some, some sort of momentum in the T20 world. I'd love to think so. Uh, we've tried to maintain uh, the integrity of our squad. You, obviously, you can't uh, retain every single player, but we've we've kept a, a strong core together. Um, we've learned a lot in our first year. We felt that you know it was a good year both on and off the field. But we'll all all of us be looking to go one step further. Um, you know, but uh, you know, <laughs> I think every team at, at the beginning of any franchise tournament always wants to play finals and win the final but at the end of the day I think if we're looking to constantly improve on what we're doing and how we're going about it uh, you know hopefully we'll be there at the big dance at the end. Yeah it is I mean it's, it's great to be here today and listen to everything that the franchise are looking at doing obviously the awareness but also now the action that the, um, the franchise are putting into place and it's been very forthcoming with the transparency uh, but like I say you know like my sister's involved um, in sustainability with, with her fashion um, brand LB Denim uh, based in East London um, so yeah it's I mean she's been doing this for I'd say a couple of decades now so it's um, it's obviously very important right now and it's, uh, it's great to see. Yeah, it, it can, and it's um, the fact that Desert Vipers are looking to be the sort of first at really making a difference. Hopefully, this will then have a knock-on effect to some other teams in the league, with other franchise teams around the world, and maybe into other sports as well. So it's, um, it, it's 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 so important that we look into these things. Some people might say it's maybe just a small little change here and there, but as we know, a small change can make 
could potentially have a huge change. Well, look, I mean, that's for the team um, behind the scenes to, to consider, but it's, um, I mean, it's, it's something that everyone needs to adopt. Um, it's about saving the planet and it's potentially saving the game because who knows with all the changes of the climate uh, potentially coming up, what effect that might have on the teams, on, on the game. So, look, it's, it's absolutely vital that we do everything that we can because the bikers are, are being. Just very switched on with the fact that they're looking at now. Very, they're putting a bit of pressure on themselves as a franchise. So, look, this is our footprint, but we're going to aim to do something about it. And, and like the guys mentioned today, it's not about having all the answers right now, but it's putting steps in the right direction. And, and hopefully, we can uh, bring out a few other franchises, a few other teams along with us.